I'm glad we're working up a little bit. Um, I have ADHD or whatever it's called. I'm hyperactive. Uh, that's serious. And I'm nervous when it's quiet. So uh, you guys can't participate. You can sell something. Feel free to yell something out or fart. Whatever it is, you got to let go. You know. Um, so. Uh, <clears throat> I repeat this day with love in my heart. For this is the greatest secret of success in all ventures. Muscles can split a shield and even destroy life, but only the unseen power of love can open the hearts of men. And until I master this art, I will remain no more than a peddler in the marketplace. I will make love my greatest weapon, and none on whom I call can, de can defend against this force. My reasoning they may counter, my speech they may distrust, my apparel they may disapprove, my face they may reject, and even my bargains may cause them suspicion. Yet my love will melt all hearts like into the sun, whose rays soften the coldest clay. That's a quote out of a book uh, from Og Mandino called The Greatest Salesman of the World. It's part of what I live my life by. I'm a street performer. I'll give you a little bit of my background now. Recently, uh, about three years ago, I was homeless. Uh, my family lost their house. Uh, my mom lost her house, and we were sleeping on the beach. We were literally homeless. We were sleeping, digging holes in the sand, and we were sleeping in the sand uh, for a while, for a while. I think the homelessness lasted close to a year in and out of uh, hotels and stuff like that. And as we were in the sand, we would wake up and there would be a thick dew. As you guys, if anybody lived by the coast, you know it's that thick dew, and we'd be soaking wet. And uh, going through this hard time, um, I was always an entertainer, and it made me, made me become a better street performer because I, I had to make money, it was an, it was an obligation. And um, uh, man, like when I was homeless, we used to, if I didn't have money for a hotel, we would get on the 33 bus and we'd ride it all the way down to the end to Union Station and we'd ride it back and then we'd ride it back again. And then we'd go to Jack and Box, 24 hour Jack and Box, we'd sit there, have a coffee, you know, we didn't have much money. And then we'd wait till six o'clock in the morning to uh, the YMCA opened up. and. I'd go wash up at the YMCA and I'd go to school. And nobody knew anything. And uh, wanted to have to help my family. My sister was 14 years old at the time. My other sister was 17. Um, it, it made me become a better street performer because in street performing, you start off loving street performing and a lot of people do it because they're passionate about it. And then as time goes on, they lose the passion. They start to do it for the money. And the minute they lose the passion, they stop getting paid. And um, I guess the reason Jeff Pover would call me a professional street performer is he says I have the, the, the keys to street performing and to social media. Um, first, I engage, whether it's racism, I'll say something random like, white people, move up. White, yes, you, white people. You know, or Asian people, just, just something random to get their attention. So I catch their attention. And um, whether they're offended, <laughs> which they are sometimes, it doesn't work 100% of the times. Um, even if they are offended and I can get them to stay, I got their attention. And once I have their attention, not only are they listening, but I'm listening to them. It gives me an opportunity to get in. It makes them vulnerable, especially when they're upset. So I get my audience somewhat upset if you've ever seen my show. But they're listening and I'm listening to them. I can understand what they want. And in street performing, it's about an exchange. It's about a give and a take. And what I've learned to do is love what I do and not just go out there for money, but to, to go out there and see what they want. And I, I notice that they want, they want attention. Sometimes I give them hugs. Sometimes I, I talk to them. I make them feel good and um, you know, engage it. Then I listen to what they're saying. And then ultimately, they pay me. They give me money. And if they don't give me enough money, I ask for more. And they give me more money. Uh, <laughs> it works uh, very efficiently just because I I mean, I guess I'm using social media. I engage, I listen, and then I, uh, I ask for money. It's uh, my formula to street performing. Um, and it's worked really well. Ju in July and August, the summer months, I performed uh, about 22 days in July and about 25 days in August. And it was about, total about 52 days. I made uh, $17,000 street performing. I don't know if it sounds like a lot, but that is a lot to me, you know, and it meant a lot to me to be able to help my family, you know, because um, I was put in a position to where I was, 
I had to do this. I, I, I didn't like sleeping on the streets. I, I had to work every day to get a hotel room to feed my family. And I learned street performing could make me money. But it makes me money because I love it, not just because I'm out there for the money. And appreciating that uh, I have a talent to entertain people. And in return, you know, giving them what they want, the entertainment and the laughter and the love and the passion and sharing a part of my life with them, um, a lot of them that are watching my show in Santa Monica are able to share a part of their life with me. A lot of them got money. So <laughs> I've had people write me $2,000 checks and I thought it was fake and cashed in the next day and I made $800 in one show. You just never know what kind of people's heart will open up. And uh, one experience that keeps me performing and engaging in social media with these people is every once in a while I had a lady once come up to me and she was crying after the show. And she was pouring that crying. I said, like, what, what's wrong? Are you okay? And she was crying and smiling, which is a weird thing if you've ever seen it, you know? It's, <laughs> you know, it's really weird. But uh, I was like, what's wrong? And she said, um, uh, two months ago, my mom and dad died in a car accident. And I have not laughed since then. Thank you so much for giving me a good show. And I can tell you don't do it for the money. And she balled up money in her hand, and she handed it to me, and it was a lot. But she said, I appreciate you, you know, performing. You're, you are a real actor, and, and acting is, is, is performing openly and freely, regardless of what people think, but giving them a part of who you are, digging deep, and, and letting it come off the top of your head. And I appreciate that you're so passionate about what you do. And I just want to say, whatever it is you, t you do, stay passionate about it, because it, it's blessed me and blessed my family, and now we're in a position to where we're not living on the streets anymore. And street performing has carried me um, throughout the years to uh, make income and live a good life. And I want to bring up Jeff Pover right now. He uh, actually found me on the streets. Well, we met on a music video set, but uh, <laughs> it, it, he saw me street performing. And uh, you can say a little something. Uh, he just look at the show. Do you show me six pack? Check this out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it does. No, but seriously, when, when I met Candy Man, I mean, the thing which I, which I was most taken back by, after watching him on the set of a music video, which we're actually both in, uh, he has, well, I got cast accidentally. Um, and actually, Sandy Graham, Andy Graham, who we go later today, uh, as uh, Candy Man met him because uh, Candy Man used to act with Andy Graham. Andy Grammer was a street, is a street performer, was a street performer. I think once you were, you always are. So, but he's now signed to Esper Records, and he's performing today or uh, this afternoon. And you used to dance for him, right? Yeah. And so it was only appropriate for you to dance in his music video. But when I met you, you know, I was thinking about what Candyman really takes, um, really doesn't even share, is that I think he, own, he, he personally owns the secrets to success in social media. Because you see, every day that he's out there connecting with an audience, sharing his love for what he does, um, listening to other people, and engaging in them, he does the one thing that most of us in this room are afraid to do. He asks for money, and he gets paid. And if someone doesn't give enough money, what happens, Candyman? What do you do? You ask for more money, and they give you more money. And if you think about this, I think there's a very weird but interesting correlation between life as a street performer and someone to be successful in leveraging these platforms we call social media. And uh, I, um, Candyman and I are working on a project here in Los Angeles because uh, he's truly a humanitarian. Uh, we had an event last night. I, I kind of suggested to Candyman after being on the you know, street performer for 10 years, he must have seen a lot of acts. I know that we had the Nick Cannon with America's Got Talent, but uh, uh, we, uh, I asked uh, Candyman to help curate some of the street performers from Third Street Promenade. And we put on a benefit concert last night where half the money raised went, went to the street performers, the other half went to the Red Cross and went to a Haiti a charity. And I thought it would be very interesting to see if this can continue so that street performers, which are always looking for money, can work together to help each other out. And maybe we can take this nationally. So anyway, it's, just, it's a pleasure to have you here. And I, I thank you for having the courage to be here. And just give it up for this man. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for listening to my story. And uh, I appreciate all your support. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at One Love Candyman, O-N-E, Love Candyman. And um, I'd like to thank Jeff Pober for bringing me up here and uh, for matching his glasses to his purple shirt. Make some noise, that's style right there, that's style. They need to be styling like that, all right? Thank you. So, hey, that's can't even give it up. Uh, really, he had kind of
crazy. Um, 